Hey guys, this is Captain Fruit reporting for duty, giving you the comic book review of the week for January 4th, 2023. Alright, for those of you that are new to the channel, what I do is I pick a bunch of comic books and I review them. Now granted, I can't read every single one of them, nor do I have time or the money to do so, but I do try to get a good grab of a bunch of different comic books and I give them a score of 0 through 10. In the 7 range is average, so you're going to find a lot in the average 7 range. And then above is better, of course, and below is worse. I give my top 3 picks, my bottom 3, and the ones that I feel are in between. So let's get right to it, shall we? If you hear papers rattle, that's because it's my notes or clicks too. That's common for the channel. So my number, we're going to start with the top, by the way. My number three was Shang-Chi, Master of the Ten Rings, annual number one. This one surprised me. I gave it a 7.04. I thought the book had solid art, has a good story. Now, granted, I'm not a fan of retcons. And if you're not aware, they really did a number on retconning Shang-Chi's background and they did it for multiple reasons i'm not going to get into that in this video but with that said they painted his father as this villain which okay fair enough and but they give more insight onto his father in this issue of how he became the way he is they give little nuggets of that and it was actually quite good and they did it in a nice way so i really did get surprised by this issue it gave it a 7.04 my number two pick. You ready? Here's my papers rattling. You hear that with my notes? <laughs> my number two pick is Batman 131 with a 7.8. Once again, that's Batman 131. Both stories of this issue had good art. And here's the thing, though. We've seen this story before. We read this story not too long ago when Batman was hit with the Omega Beam. And remember, Batman was dead, but Tim Drake didn't believe it and was in search of it. Well, we've got the same exact story pretty much here. We have Batman was zapped. He ends up somewhere different. And, every, you know, people think, okay, Batman's dead, but Tim Drake doesn't think he is. Hmm. Now, and this also, Nightwing doesn't think he is either and thinks he'll come back. But Nightwing tends to be a wishful thinking kind of guy. But we've seen this story before. But what makes this issue special to me is this is a return to form of how Tim Drake should be written. Right now, Tim Drake's own series is absolute garbage, should be not even just canceled, but it should be deleted. It's absolute trash. It does. It's a travesty. It's terrible to the character. And I'm not just saying it because of homophobic stuff or anything. No, granted, I will say I'm not a fan of that in this character because this character has never shown signs of that until they started planting seeds for a, a little while ago. But he had one of the best relationships in comic books. He just had a long relationship with Spoiler, and they just worked really well, and they lost that. So that is a gripe. But that's my biggest point here is he's drawn well, he's characterized well, and they did a really good job with Tim Drake in this issue. I gave this issue, once again, a 7.8. Now, my number one. You ready? This one, I thought, it was quite surprising. Uh, I mean, it didn't surprise me it was good. I was expecting good based on what this writer's been doing with the Hulk character lately. But it's nice to see some throwback writers. Are you ready? Are you ready for the number one? Let's do this one some justice. Joe, Joe fix, fix it, it number one. one. Yeah, yeah, Joe, Joe fix it number one. Can you believe it? We're taking a stroll back in the past. I gave this issue an 8.5. It's a mini series. Solid art. A really fun, good story. We have the Hulk versus the Kingpin. And I'm not going to hold anything back. I think everyone should know how this pans out. <laughs> but what's cool is it sets up, sets up the next issue where Kingpin's now going to have to use his brains to get past Joe Fixit. So what happened is is he wanted to come up together to with uh, Joe Fixit's boss to take down another group, and then he was going to secretly take over them. But they said, "Hey, we don't need your help for this. We've got Joe Fixit." And then Kingpin didn't take lightly to that. Went after Joe Fixit and found out he effed around with joe fix it and found out <laughs> but it really is it's it's like reading this issue as a time capsule it's like going back in time but it's just a good story with good art if you have not gotten this i recommend getting this i have a good feeling this miniseries is going to be good 
All right, now before moving on to the bottom three next, I want to say thank you to these people here. Without these people, this channel wouldn't be possible. They help support the channel through Patreon and Subscribestar. Really, really helps. Without them, truly, I wouldn't be able to do all this. So thank these people, okay? I know I do. I consider them producers of the show. If you want to help this show out too, you can as well by just simply hitting like and subscribing. Share this video. It would really help. I need all analytic help I can get. But also, too, if you're in a monetary position, you want to help out, throw a dollar in for as little as a dollar a month, you can join my Subscribestar or Patreon. I'd rather you do Subscribestar first, if you don't mind, because I have people there, but I don't get payouts until it's a certain amount. So they're willing to help me. It's just I don't get it until that, a certain number, which is sort of silly, but that's the way it is. And that would help me more if you don't mind. Uh, if you do do that, you get special promotional material, special videos that are just for you and access to other things like music and more. All right, and with the shilling aside, let's jump to the bottom three. Are you ready? I know some people have already heard some rumbles of some of these. Now, the first one of my bottom three wasn't as bad as you'd think, and that was Captain Marvel number 45. I gave it a 7.015. Captain Marvel number 45. Now, it was pretty good cover. Yeah, it's solid art too. It's actually a pretty fun story, but where it, where it takes a hit is the dialogue is a bit cringy. Uh, I mean, especially when it comes to how they're portraying X-23, oh, I should say Wolverine, right? I don't kind of hate when they have the same name. But nonetheless, that's where, uh, you know, I thought it was a little bit of a down peg there. The, once again, dialogue is a little cringy in this, but otherwise it wasn't a bad issue. It's clearly uh, a case of Marvel trying to use X-Men to drum up sales. We've seen this before. This is a common Marvel and DC tactic. We've seen a lot actually in Marvel particularly. All right, here, you ready? Let's go to my number two of the bottom. This one, who, you ready? Avengers number 64. Yeah, Avengers 64. Let me get to my notes because there is a lot to say about this issue. Whew, what can I not say? Avengers 64. Anyway, I gave this issue a seven. Now, you might go, well, seven's average, so that's not too bad. You're right, but it has a lot of reasons it gets knocked down a peg here. It really, really does. It's just, oh, what can I say? Well, first of all, Let's go over something big here. I'm going to show you a picture here, okay? And in this picture here, I'm going to make sure I pull it up and read it properly. It has Iron Man and his thinks. He goes, I never fought in a war. I only made weapons for others to do so. My father always told me that good weapons save lives. But that's only a polite way of saying that the more efficiently you slaughter your enemies, the more likely you are to come home alive. Now, my kicker with this is he says, I never fought in a war. Bullshit! Iron Man has fought in many wars. The Ar I remember Armor Wars, Secret Wars, one, two, three, the other one afterwards that they did. Holy cow. As a matter of fact, this is so dumb. This is such a dumb thought bubble showing that this writer does not understand what the heck he's writing for. In the very same month, very same month, Secret Invasion, number three of five. Once again, Secret Invasion, number three of five. You've got Tony Stark in a panel saying this. I've gone to war multiple times to fight off your planet's invasions. And you know what I've learned. Went to war, gone to war multiple times. You, Marvel, you contradicted your own, your own thought bubble in the very same month. Get your continuity straight ridiculous know your characters how do you not know that iron man has not been in wars the kree skull scroll war he's been in so many wars absolutely ridiculous so i had a hammer avengers 64 for that reason alone now <laughs> it's an action-packed issue it has decent art and as i've said it before i'm not a fan of this story arc i don't like this you know, retconning of the future of the Avengers. And of course, good old Tony has to go back to having daddy issues again. So really, you're gonna go, How did you, how'd you give it a seven? Well, as I said, it could have been a lot worse. It's just those particular things really hit it hard. And whew, talk about stinking it up with stupidity. But speaking of stupidity, it's not the worst one in the, in the chapters of stupid. Let's really go to the number one of stupid. Are you ready for this one? My number one pick, Spider-Man Spider number, number four. four. Marvel was 
they put Dan Slott on the Spider-Man book again. If you want poor dialogue, that's the way you do it. Spider-Man number four, I gave it a whopping six out of ten. The writing in this is absolutely ridiculous. Matter of fact, I'm going to show you a panel here, right, where the, the Craven type of Spider-Man hunter, he wants to attack here. Big time. He, this, is, this is our chance. We're going to attack. But when Miles Morales decides to attack, Hunter decides he does not want to attack anymore and just leaves. What? That made no rational sense at all. He goes, right, let's do this. Let's attack you. Well, he attacked. Well, he's on his own now. I'm out of here. That was so cringy, dumb writing. Once again, shows that Dan Slott cannot write characters. He's a big picture guy, comes up with big picture ideas, but he really fails on the execution of getting there. All the stuff in between and usually fails the landing too. I mean, it was just absolutely stupid. It made no sense. The art is good in this book. Okay, Mark Bagley always does great art in my opinion, but the story is dumb. The whole, this whole story has been dumb. The whole story arc, bad dialogue continually. It's just the slot type of writing that just fails to hit, trying to be funnier than what he is and failing at doing so. Ugh, absolute fail on that one. All right, now let's go to the books that are my in-between books here. So give me a moment here, get my, get my crap together. <laughs> get your stuff together. All right, here we go. We had Gold Goblin number three of five. I gave it a 7.025. Has good art. It's a surprisingly good story and it really makes you wonder can Norman find peace and redeem himself here I'm leaning towards no and I in a way I don't well actually not in a way I just don't I don't want him to because he's too good of a villain to have turned good I understand it's nice to sometimes see these redemption stories and heroes turn good but I mean come on now this is a key villain and on another little nitpick is I don't really care for the gold goblin suit either it looks pretty generic but that you know it is what it is now of a lesser Hulk book, we have Planet Hulk World Breaker number 3 of 5. I gave it a 7.01. This is nowhere near as good as Joe Fix It, but we did get a good amount of story building in this issue and a good amount of action. The art is decent, and it's nice seeing She-Hulk kicking some butt, let's be honest. It, this is probably the best issue of this miniseries we've had so far. Planet Hulk World Breaker number 3 of 5. I'm not saying go out and get this series so far. It's still a skip if you ask me. I wouldn't bother or pick it up and trade if you really have to have it. But this was the best one so far of the series. All right, my next one is Secret Invasion number 3 of 5. I gave it a 7.023. This issue shows how sloppy the writing was in Avengers, as I mentioned before. With just a single panel on this issue... It shows the lack of continuity and pay, paying attention to what's going on. It's an interesting story, but we've seen this story before. But it's a nice twist to it. It's a little different, and I'm hoping it really spices up the next two issues. I mean, we're three out of five issues in already. What more can really happen? I, I mean, I think maybe they're cramming it too much into five issues. They maybe should have made it a little longer at this with this pace. I'm not sure... It's, once again, um, it's retrenching this story again, but it is pretty interesting seeing how Maria Hill is handling this, giving Maria Hill the spotlight here. I'm willing to give it a go and hope for number four to continue and yet even be better. All right, now one of them that everybody has been waiting for. <laughs> it didn't fall on the bottom or the top, and it's Joker, the man who stopped laughing. Number four of six. I gave it a 7.03. Hear me out here, though, okay? The main story is creepy, and I mean that in a good way. The main story is what's good about this issue. I want to see more of Jason Todd in stories, too. I like it that Jason Todd is going after Joker and going after him hard. It's a solid story. It really is. The first story is solid. The art's pretty good. It's creepy. It, it really does show Joker in the creepy light. Now, here's the thing. The big topic that's been getting a lot of people's attention is the second story. I don't think the second stories have been meant to be canon in this series. They're just so cheesy and out there. But with that said, this one really went the extra mile to, cheese, to be cheese. As you see in the panels here, we have bad art, first of all. The art is just not very good. Not very good at all. And then we have the thing that's been making its way around the Twitterverse, and that is Pregnant Joker. Well, what do we have? What, what have we here? He's pregnant. I think you're pregnant. I think you're right. Do we have a good OBGYN we can use? I mean, DC, 
men can't get pregnant, knock it off. And then we're thinking here, if you have a guy with a flaming skull, the atomic skull, are you going to have a guy with a flaming skull between your legs? That would burn your nuts off. But once again, it doesn't make sense. And what the heck is he even looking at down there? He's pregnant, right? Uh, what's the sea down there? <laughs> it doesn't make any sense. It's not like he can poke around and look, right? And so then when he does have birth, he pukes the sludge out that looks a lot like Clayface that molds into a little Joker. Now, my nitpicks is 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 not that oh my goodness, you know, it, the controversy necessarily. It's just it's stupid. It's so stupid. There is elements of silliness you can get away with, but this one is it's so stupid. It's ridiculously bad. I mean, I get silliness and stupidness once in a while is okay, and that's what these short stories seem to be. And it clearly can't be canon. I would hope not anyway. But it's just dumb on every level. A little bit gross. And it just doesn't make any sense. I mean, once again, what was the Atomic Skull or whatever expecting to see down there besides Joker stuff? I mean, really. Absolutely ridiculous. Dumb, dumb, dumb. You, men can't get pregnant, DC. Learn. So I deducted some points for that. Uh, next one, Captain America Central Liberty number 8 at a 7.02. Story building issue again. Okay, it's a little slow, but it had solid art. And Modoc needs to get his butt kicked. Let's be honest there. I thought it was a nice little way to throw in some characters you don't normally see with Captain America. So that was nice, as well as his crew that you do see. So it was quite good. Um, but I'm not a big fan of having a bunch of Captain's, Captain Americas running around. Please don't at me. It has no mean intention in there. I think Steve Rogers should be the Captain America. I just do. Okay, once again, no slight against Sam Wilson. I think he is a good character, an amazing Falcon. Once again, anybody that doesn't wants to come at me, they don't know me and see all the Captain America art and uh, and as well as Falcon art and action figures I have around in here. I'm a big Sam Wilson fan. I just think having multiple characters running around with the same name dilutes the character for dealing that same issue with Spider-Man. The only ones that I think get away with it is maybe the Green Lantern Corps, the Nova Corps, and then to some degree too, Flash. For some reason, the Flash family just seems to work. But this, uh, it was an okay issue. As I said, 7.02, nothing spectacular, not a high point of this series, but not terrible. All right, well, there you have it. Those are the books I read. Which ones should I have read? What did I miss? What do you think I should read? And there was my gripes too. Uh, let me know what your thoughts are on those things. Am I just maybe... Get off my lawn, old man, barking into the clouds or whatever. Or did you feel that maybe that Joker issue was just completely stupid? As well as Dan Slott's writing on that issue of Spider-Man number four. Ugh, that guy shouldn't be writing Spider-Man in my opinion. Well, thank you for your time. Take care, everybody. Until next time. Keep it frugal.